Hi, Father Taylor here. Week three of learning to pray from the Psalms. The whole idea is the Psalms is teaching us and showing us things about this relationship we have with God. Have to remember, number one point of all of this is keeping the main thing the main thing. It's not about scholarship. It's not about um, the tools. It's about allowing the process of getting into the Psalms to become the way that we uh, see and learn how do we have this relationship with God. And keep going back to that um, picture of before everything fell apart, back where Adam and Eve walked with God in this life. And because of the Holy Spirit and what Jesus has done, we are called now to begin to experience that, which will be the fullness when he returns, but we are, are, are called into, invited into, and brought into this relationship with God, where every day uh, we begin more and more to see God responding. We're speaking, we're thinking, God responding, God leading. So the main thing is our relationship with God and allowing the Psalms to be a way we learn from it. It's not about the Psalms themselves, but it's about using the Psalms to get where we want to go, and that is to be with Jesus and to hear him speak to us. Keep the main thing the main thing, okay? All right, so for that reason, uh, what I'm doing week three is, is going over the things we did in the past, that we learned in the past, putting together in a, little, in, in a, in a tighter box, a toolkit, uh, and allowing you, and giving you the opportunity to practice uh, in groups and on your own practice, how do we open up these Psalms and see what's going on to lead us deeper into our relationship with God. Hopefully, hopefully it somehow that tracks you into it. Anyway, here we go. So remember, here's, how, here's what we're doing. So we've been developing what I'm calling a toolbox. And the purpose of tools, you know, is to be able to get and take things apart and fix things. In your toolbox, you have two sets of tools. One is learning to notice things on the, what I call the outside characteristics of the psalm, the shape of the psalm, how are the verses look, what kind of psalm it is. Um, uh, is it an I psalm? Is it a we psalm? Is it uh, what type of psalm? So they're out, outer pieces. And there's inner pieces too, the inner characteristics. There's a whole nother set of tools. That's looking at the little couplets. Remember that was week one. Are, are the two lines and couplets, are they related as synonymous? Second line restates the first in a new way. Um, the, uh, are they opposites? Or, are they, or does the second line complete the first? So you want to get into and you want to start looking at not just a psalm, but looking at lines. That's the inside. You begin to look at um, what kind of words does the psalmist use? Are they references to thing in history? When we looked at Psalm 18, you know, um, my strong, God is my stronghold, my crag, and my haven. We looked at those three things. Those were those are specific things that David had experienced, particularly when he was fleeing from Saul. God is my stronghold, my crag, and my haven. So that's the inner part. So you, you have a toolkit. So here's, here's what you do when you get a psalm. And this is what we'll practice uh, coming up this week. Read the psalm kind of what I call at a medium to slow rate. Now, what does that mean? If I was reading for Electio Divina, like I was looking for that word or phrase that spoke to me, boy, I go through these, I would be going through a couple of verses very slowly, very slowly. And I'm trying to think about every word as it's going by. But here we're taking the first reading as we're going through at a medium, play, medium pace, uh, fast enough to get the feel of the psalm, but slow enough to notice things. So the first time through, you go through, and have your pen and paper ready or your, whoever you're doing notes. But just starting right down things, starting to write down after you've read it through, what did you notice? First thing that came to mind might be mood, might be there were some really key words, might be some words I didn't understand. But I'd be writing down the things we notice first as we go all the way through. Okay, so now you got a, a basic feel for the song. Then uh, go out in the trunk or your garage, wherever you keep them, get your toolkit. And, and start looking at, first of all, outer characteristics of the psalm. Now, here are those outer characteristics we're looking at more specifically. Um, what kind of a psalm is it? So we, we mentioned several. 
Um, it's a psalm of thanks. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let all the people say, okay, psalm of thanks is what reasons to be thankful. It's a psalm of praise. Praise be to God who is like this. He is a greater. He is a, above all gods. And it's a psalm of just a psalm of praise. Almost like you could imagine a whole congregation singing it together just as a worship song. Is it a lament? Lament isn't a complaint. It's more like I'm in this relationship with you. You are the God who's connected to us through a covenant. Why is it then that our enemies seem to be running all over us? Uh, how long will we be like this? How long, O oh Lord? So is it a lament? Uh, is it a wisdom psalm, like Psalm 1 or Psalm 15? They're not necessarily praise or thanks or laments. What they're really about, uh, Psalm 1, is there's two roads you can take. Uh, what, here's, the, here's the way the righteous live, and here's the way the end of a righteous life. Here's the way the wicked live, and here's the end of a wicked life. So uh, those types of psalms. Uh, is it a petition, just a series of prayers, or uh, I'm in trouble and I need help kind of a psalm? So again, the purpose of that is now you're starting to think about the psalm. Oh, this is this kind of a psalm. So you're already getting deeper into the psalm. So first ask, what kind of a psalm is it? Then ask, what's the reason for the psalm? Um, a psalm of thanksgiving might be, it's a congregational psalm that people sing during a, a certain celebration. Uh, but a reason for song, as we looked at in weeks one and two, is maybe there's a conflict. That is to say, there's trouble the person's in, and they're calling out for God for help. It could be that it starts off, you are the everlasting God who is holy and above all others, but then it's, I'm in trouble and my enemies are surrounding me. Or, the waters are rising up to my neck, uh, and then calling out to God. And then, if that's the kind of a psalm it is, if that's the dynamic inside, uh, where does it resolve? Do you see something happen uh, where all of a sudden it seems as though the God has responded and the person is now saying, but now I will rejoice. So just as a footnote, remember that when, when you're going through trouble and you're praying and suddenly you start thinking about times in the past that you were in trouble, but God broke through for you or times in the past and you heard stories about how God broke through for somebody else, or, or scriptures that you may have heard and learned. When those come to mind, those aren't by accident. Uh, that's the Holy Spirit interacting with you to bring those things to your mind. So God responding. Um, so anyway, so, so look for, is there, what's the reason for the Psalm? If it's a, is there a conflict? And if it is, where is there a transition? Um, is it an I psalm or a we psalm? Some of the psalms are about, I called out to the Lord and he heard my prayer from his holy hill. Some of them are we songs. You know, there's songs about the whole nation, uh, all of the people God, right? Specifically the, the nation of Israel, but they're we songs. So again, look at the outer pieces. How is it set up? Uh, what's the feeling? What kind of a psalm is it? What's the reason for the psalm? And so now, now that you've gotten a better, see, you're already jumping to a better feel for the, what kind of a psalm it is. Then go back and the third time, look at the inside, what I'm calling the uh, inner characteristics. So look at those couplets, get all the way in so you can kind of feel what's going through. Uh, if it's synonymous, what are the words he's using to describe the situation? Or, and then what's the second set of words? How do they relate? I'll get into each of the words. What are the key words? Uh, is it about Zion, your holy hill, the temple? Are the key words about uh, the snares of the hunter? I mean, what, what are the key words and phrases? What are the illustrations that he uses? Are they to geographical places? Are they to feelings? Uh, um, like like the, your, the breakers of uh, death rolled over me? I mean, what is that a picture of? Get into the picture, allow yourself to see it. The more you see it, the clearer it becomes. It just takes a little time to work with it. Um, what, what does it reveal about God? If it's giving praise to God, praise to God for what? Or what is it describing about God? What words is it using about God? 
And then, so, so anyway, we've looked at the outside part, look at the inside part, you're writing down some of your reflections. Remember, everything that you write out here helps you get a little more understanding. And also, that's the process where the Holy Spirit is working with you in what you see and how you get it. So just allow this to just keep digging, you know, big stuff outer, small stuff inner, okay? Then at the end of it all, before you get into the prayer, what is it, as I said, what does it reveal about God? What does it reveal about you? What in this psalm connects with you personally? Um, something that you have, something that you've done, some place you've been, or something that you don't have, some place you've never been, uh, that maybe you want to be there in this kind of place, like, oh, how wonderful it is to be in the presence of God. And what is that like? If you've never had that experience, just note that. So now you've, had an, you've looked at the overall, you've looked at the outer part, inner part, You've done some self-reflection on it. Now, go back and pray the psalm as if it was your psalm. Because this is your psalm that you wrote yourself. Pray them with emotion. If there's nobody around, you know, at least approximate, you know, I cry out to you, Lord, or give thanks to the Lord. I mean, just don't sit back and go give thanks to the Lord. It's good. It's me. All the, let's shout to the Lord. I mean, no, no. Think about how expressive these psalms are. The writers of these psalms were not uh, from Great Britain in the 18th and 19th century. There's no stiff upper lip here. These are highly emotive people who stand, who shout, who uh, sing, who sing in their hearts, who cry aloud. I mean, there's emotion going on here. You want to get into these psalms and connect with the Lord? Take some of that emotion with you and experience some of that. And then after you've prayed through the psalm, Again, just go back and think about where is the psalm speaking to you personally? It might be that something kicks off and you go in another direction, but that's a leading. And so go ahead and follow that. Where does it take you? Take you? Okay, there's the main reason. It's not about the words. It's about the Lord. The Lord wants to be in this relationship with us where we speak with him and he responds. Allow, so that's the main thing. I want to get into this, Lord, because I want to hear you. I want to know you. And I want to be present to you throughout my entire day and you to be present to me. That's number one. Two, uh, as you've picked out a psalm to read, read through it at a medium pace, write down your observations, get your toolkit out, look at the pieces from the outside, structure things, big picture things, go back into the couplets, look at each word, Look at the illustrations, allow yourself to see them. Ask questions, what does it reveal about God? What does it reveal about me? And then go back and pray it as your own prayer. And allow the Holy Spirit to grab your heart in that, to feel it, you know, to really feel it. And um, but then what have you learned in that that maybe takes you in a new direction, okay? Just, this is a personal observation. You really love somebody and you like getting, even if you just like somebody a lot and say, hey, I'm gonna go over to their house and we're gonna like have some iced tea and look at the sunset, you know, as the sun's going down in Terrafield. You know, don't you get a little bit excited about getting over there or anticipating? I wonder how they're doing or what are they gonna say to me? And how are things going? You know, that's why we get together. That's a relationship. We don't go like, oh, I'm gonna go over her house and I'm gonna follow this program and, and you, you know, Think of, your, think of the way your relationships go and your emotions go, how it all connects and bring that to the Lord in your prayer. That's the point of it all, okay? So hopefully if I get some time, I'll write that whole thing down. But otherwise, may the Holy Spirit invite you in to a deeper relationship where you see and know the Lord in ways beyond what you might have asked or imagined. Okay.